Now let us discuss about human risk, human excretory system. Human excretory system includes a pair of kidneys. One pair of kidneys, one pair of ureters, one pair of ureters, urinary bladder and urethra which opens outside. Human excrete system includes a pair of kidneys, one pair of ureters, urinary bladder, followed by a short tube called as urethra, which opens outside. Now, nephrology. Study about the structure. Anatomy, physiology and pathology of kidneys. It is the study, it is the study of anatomy. Anatomy means its, its structure. Physiology means its function, how it's working. Pathology, what are the diseases seen in that? So anatomy, physiology and pathology of kidneys, the study of which is called as nephrology. Urology. Study about male and female excretory system and male reproductive system. It is called as urology. Now we will start with a pair of kidneys. Now human kidneys are bean shaped. So they, their shape is bean shaped and they are red in color. Now they are retroperitoneal organs. When I say they are retroperitoneal organs, entrosilomates, so this body cavity is lined on both the sides by mesodermal epithelium. The dotted lines on both the sides this is the body cavity. So this is the body wall, this is the gut. Now this is the body cavity. Body cavity on both the sides is lined by mesodermal epithelium. So this is the parietal peritoneum, this is visceral peritoneum. Now this is the parietal peritoneum. So this is parietal peritoneum. Now where are kidneys present? Kidneys are present there. Kidneys is present, it is there. the dorsal side, ventral side. The kidneys are present just above the waist. They are present just above the waist. So the, these are kidneys. This is the dorsal body wall. This is peritoneum. So that means the kidneys are attached to the dorsal body wall. They are lined only on one side. On the ventral side, they are lined by parietal peritoneum. Then that organs are supposed to be retroperitoneal organs. Now, the level of kidneys. The level of kidneys, they, it is present at the level in between the last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae. Hmm? Cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. Cervical is the vertebra present in the neck. So this is the thoracic region. Above diaphragm, it is thoracic region. In thoracic region there are 12 and then followed by lumbar and sacral. See this is the abdominal region, anterior posterior. So lumbar is in the anterior region. So last thoracic, last thoracic vertebrae and the third lumbar vertebrae. Lumbar region 5 vertebrae are present. So in between that you can see partially overlapped by last two ribs is present attached to the dorsal body wall. Kidneys are attached to the dorsal body wall. Partially overlapped by last two pairs of ribs. Now, if I take the dimensions of kidney, dimensions 10 to 12 centimeters in length, 5 to 7 centimeters in width, 10 to 12 centimeters by length, 5 to 7 centimeters by width, 
2 to 3 centimeters in thickness. Each kidney is around 120 to 170 grams. So roughly it is 150 grams in weight. So that is the dimensions of the kidney. It is bean, it is red in color, they are retroperitoneal organs. Their, its length is around 10 to 12 centimeters, width is 5 to 7 centimeters, thickness is 2 to 3 centimeters and each kidney weighs around 150 grams, 120 to 170 grams in weight. Now, <coughs> each kidney is when I take cross section. Now, cross section LS of kidney is like this. longitudinal section of kidneys is, is like this. Now before we go to the longitudinal section externally it has got three layers. It has got three layers. Just above the kidneys there is renal capsule. It is renal capsule. It is made up of dense fibrous connective tissue. Dense irregular fibrous connective tissue. So it is a thick membrane which covers the kidneys, gives protection. Above that, above that you can find a layer of perirenal fat. Perirenal fat. Renal means kidneys. Peri means surrounding. So surrounding kidneys there is fat. Now fat is present subcutaneously beneath the skin. It is present in palms, soles. So in the hip region. It is also present surrounding the internal eyeball, surrounding the heart and kidneys. At various places you can see there is accumulation of fat. So there is fat above renal capsule. And if you go above that, if you see above that, there is again one more rail, one more layer called as renal fascia. Renal fascia is made up of dense irregular connective tissue. It is a thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue. So with that connective tissue, kidneys are attached to adjoining organs and tissues. So the renal fascia forms a connection between kidneys and other organs externally. Now when you come to the internal structure, when you come to the internal structure of kidneys, you can see the outer region. The outer region is called cortex and the inner region is called as medulla. This outer region is light red in color. This light red in color, this area, from here till here. So this outer margin is called as cortex. And this area internally, so, so area right to my hand, huh? that total area, that total area is called as medulla. Cortex is light red in color. Medulla is dark red or reddish brown in color. Now cortex is continuous, but medulla is not continuous. It is divided into triangular structures. Medulla, medulla is divided into that conical structures. The conical structures are called as renal pyramids. Renal means kidneys, pyramids present inside the kidneys. They are also called medullary pyramids because they are present inside the medulla. They are 8 to 18 medullary pyramids. Each of the pyramid has got broad base and pointed apex. This is the broad base, this is the pointed apex. The tip of the apex is called as renal papilla. It is called as papilla. Now we got base is present towards the cortex, 
papilla is projected inwards towards this cavity. This cavity is called pelvis. Right? So that cavity is called pelvis. So papillae are directed towards the pelvis. Now, the, I told you cortex is continuous, but medulla is not continuous, it is formed into renal pyramids. Now in between the renal pyramids there are gaps. Now this, this cortex, this cortex, it dips like that, it dips like that into gap pre present between two pyramids. The outer cortex dips. So it enters into that gap present between two pyramids. So that area, that area, so that area is called as columns of Bettini. So this is cortex, this is medulla. So this area is medulla, this area is medulla. Medulla is not continuous, it is divided into pyramids and there are gaps in between pyramids. So into that gap, outer cortex dips, that areas are called as columns of Bettini. Now, each of this renal pyramid opens into a small canal. The canal is called as calyx. It is called calyx. Calyx singular, calyces plural. Now we have got several calyces. As many pyramids, so many calyces. So there are there are 8 to 18 minor calyces. A few minor calyces combine together to form a major calyx. See here, this is a major calyx. These are minor calyces. 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are minor calyces. This is a major calyx. So th these are calyces. These are minor calyces. This is a major now difference between minor and major calyces. As many renal pyramids are present, so many minor calyces are present. A few minor calyces combine together to form a major calyx. So normally two or three major calyces are present. Now all these calyces combine into a common cavity. The cavity is called as pelvis. Pelvis, it narrows outside and comes outside as urate. All the major calyces, whether they are, they are generally few in number, two or three. Now, these few major calyces open into a common chamber. The chamber is called as pelvis. The pelvis narrows outside, comes outside as urate. Now, if I take a kidney, outside it is convex, inside it is concave. If I take a kidney, If I take an individual kidney, outside it is convex, inside it is concave. Now in the concave side, there is a depression. The depression is called as hilum or hilus, renal hilum or renal hilus. So at the region of renal hilum, you can see ureter is coming out. At the same region, you can also see two blood vessels. One blood vessel is renal artery. One is the renal artery. Other is renal vein. You can see both here. This is renal artery. This is renal vein. Renal artery takes oxygenated blood to, into the kidney. And renal vein, it is bringing about deoxygenated blood.